way up. into Angela, but I call her Ye. <laughs> way, way up. up. Yes, it's way up with Angela Ye and Jasmine Brand is here with me. Good morning. Holding it down from day one. Yes. Yes. I'm here, Angela. We had a night last night, but My- um, we'll get Ooh. into that on about last night. Okay. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad I made it too, Angela. <laughs> uh, isn't that fun, though, when you could the next day be like, we had a time last night. It is It is fun, Angela. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, um, what's today? Thursday. And we do have uh, Mastery of Comedy on Thursdays. Okay. So we are going to have comedian Daryl Kelly. Along with two of his sons and his daughter, they'll be joining us for Mastery of Comedy today. Okay. The whole family is comedian, except the daughter, mm-hmm. uh, Shauna. She's not a comedian, but she holds everything down in the family, yeah, business-wise. She, she holds the fort down. Mm-hmm. Always important to make sure you have that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, also, today we have Yeetie, like we do every day. Yes, Three we of do. Those. Yep. We, there's a lot going on in the rumors. I see... John Morant has done an interview, Mm -hmm. so we'll get to hear what he has to say. And we saw Whoopi Goldberg got in some trouble. Yeah, she had to apologize, right? So we'll discuss all of that and see. I didn't realize. Me neither. I already know what you're going to say. Certain things you couldn't say. Yeah. I don't know if we can say it. Can you say the word you can't say when you're discussing the word you can't say? In context. In context, you can? Okay. Or maybe we just spell it. I don't know. Yeah, Angela, maybe we should just spell it. What's the rule, right? If we're talking about a word you're not supposed to say, can we say the word that you're not supposed to say? Or do you just say the first uh, letter of it? Okay. The G word or the, you know? But then no one's going to know what that is. At all. (laughs) All right. Well, anyway, it's also time to shine a light. Now, you know, we always start the show off shining a light on somebody doing something positive. There's so many lights that I want to shine today. And I know you guys do, too. And I absolutely love when y'all call in Mm -hmm. and show some love to people who have done great things in your life. It could be family members. Okay. It could be a complete stranger. Yes. Um, It could be yourself. We've had quite a few people shine a light on themselves. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Me neither. I I know initially I was like, shine a light on yourself. (laughs) But you're right. Like, you do need to celebrate yourself sometimes because it is incredible the things that we can pull off when we need to. Yep. So, all of those things. And Jasmine, you should shine a light on yourself today because you made it. (laughs) Uh, Yes, I did. (laughs) 800 292 5150 is the number. You know, it is way up with Angela Yee. And when we come back, we are going to shine a light on somebody doing something positive. If you can't get through, you can always leave a message that'll play during last word. Again, that number is 800 292 5150. Shine a light on them. Time to shine a light on them. Yes, it's way up at Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine Brand from The Jasmine Brand is here. Happy Thursday. You know who she is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we do want to shine a light on people doing something positive. And today we want to shine a light on Greenhaven Correctional Facility. Shout out to everybody there. Yes. Who listens to Way Up with Angela Yee. We see y'all, Greenhaven Correctional Facility. Mm-hmm. They're in the building. All right. And who do y'all want to shine a light on? Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Matisse Dumas out of Detroit, Michigan. Okay, what up, though? What up, though? You, who you want to shine a light on? Man, I want to shine a light on my 15-year-old daughter. She turned 15 today, and Ooh. she's just an amazing child. Her name's Tatiana Michaela Dumas, and the reason I want to shine a light on her is because she's baby on the roll. I've never had to help her with any type of homework. She has both her parents in her life. And she wakes up on her own, you know, with this pandemic thing. She doesn't need our help at all. She's been doing this whole virtual learning thing. She's about to go back into regular school. But she's just amazing to me. You know, when I was her age, I used to have to get woken up. And I used to fight my sleep. She gets up by herself. <laughs> I still she do. makes her breakfast. Yeah. Oh, wow. And she does her classwork. And she also helps me out with my LLC. Um, we breed Yorkshire Terriers in the city. So... She's just a staple to me. Like, if I could I shine that. a light on anybody, it would be my 15-year-old daughter. And I'm not sure if she can hear this, but I want to say happy birthday to you, baby. Daddy loves you. Aww. Tatiana Michaela Dumas. <laughs> you got good memory, Absolutely. Angela. Thank you so much. All right. I love that. Mm-hmm. 15 years old. Happy birthday, Tatiana. And she on the honor roll. Denzel, who do you want to shine a light on today? Hey, I just want to shout a lot on um, Sierra Quainton and Megan Johnson. They're doing a Dreams Do Come True brunch. This is their, I do believe, eighth year. And they're bringing Super Thin out. She's coming next week. So y'all come out to the party. If you have not gotten your tickets, go ahead and get your tickets. Where is this? Super Thin will be in the building. It's going to be here in Orlando. I, I um, did that brunch both- before. Ooh. Yeah, um, Trina was here last year, so... 
Supercent coming this year. I'm just trying to give a free little promo to everybody. Go ahead and get your tickets. Dreams Do Come True Brunch. It's going to be on Facebook, Instagram. Look it up. Supercent is coming next week. I just want to do a little free promo for my best friend, Megan. Oh, okay. Y'all go ahead and come out. I actually did the Dreams Do Come True Brunch back in 2016. So shout out to you guys. That's amazing. I appreciate that. Y'all have a good day, and I just want to do the free promo. Y'all come on okay, out. Okay, he's like, no, <laughs> let's just talk about this. All right, shout out to Supercent, too. We love Supercent also. <laughs> She's a boss. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to hear y'all. Yes, I'm happy to got through. He's like, okay, just want to do this free promo one more time. These dreams do come true brunch <laughs> with Supercent. <laughs> Yes, and that was Shine a Light on them. 800-292-5150 is the number. Make sure y'all call in and shine a light. Dreams do come true brunch one more time. And when we come back, we have Yeetie. We'll be talking about John Morant and his sit-down interview with Jalen Rose. We'll tell you what he had to say. It's way up. Way up. Just like to talk like they Angela Yee. Like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yeetie. Way up. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine Brand is here with me. Good morning. Good morning. And for Yee first thing we want to talk about is John Moran. He did a sit-down interview with Jalen Rose. I saw when Jalen Rose posted it yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said, talk to John Moran about poor decisions he has made and what he has learned. Okay. You know, he got suspended for eight games by the NBA for a conduct detrimental to the league. They announced that. And that all follows an incident where John Moran was seen on an Instagram live video holding a gun at a nightclub outside Denver. There's been a whole snowball effect since then. Right. And here's what he had to say on what was going through his head when he went live on Instagram with that gun. Okay. What were you thinking and feeling at that moment when you decided to go live? Pretty much just trying to be free. Use that as an escape, which I shouldn't have. And I feel like that's the reason, you know, I made many, you know, bad decisions, you know, in my past, which doesn't describe Jai as a person. You know, I'm totally different person, you know, than what's been shown, you know, in the media. I was, felt like, you know, I was releasing stress and I felt like it was healthy for me, and, which it wasn't. And that caused me to do some things that, you know, I shouldn't have. All right. In addition to that, he talked about taking full responsibility for what he did. You at the spot, shotgun willies. You are holding a gun and we both know how dangerous that can be. Whose gun were you holding? Well, the gun wasn't mine. It's not who I am. I don't condone and, you know, any type of violence. Um, but I take, you know, full responsibility, you know, for my actions. Um, made a you know, bad mistake. Now, I saw Jalen Rose going back and forth with somebody on social media. I guess people had an issue with him asking a question about the gun. Mm -hmm. And he said he has a corporate job and sponsors. It was necessary for him to say it wasn't his gun, even if you're not sophisticated enough to understand it. <laughs> and that person deleted their comment. So I don't know what they said. OK, Jalen. Uh, but here's what John Morant had to say on what his last uh, 10 to 11 days have looked like. What is the last 10 or 11 days been like for you? And how are you doing? Uh, me personally, um, I feel mentally good that I haven't, you know, been in, you know, many years. You know, I'm in a space where I'm, you know, very comfortable. You know, I was constantly, you know, talking to therapists. Um, I've been doing, you know, Reiki treatment. Um, I've been doing anxiety breathing, you know, different stuff to, you know, help me manage that and, you know, release, you know, all that stuff from my body. He's doing a lot. Reiki treatments. Yeah. I've actually wanted to try that. I was going to ask you, if Angela, if you had that. You know, I'll be trying before. everything. Yeah. You do a little bit. Of, yeah. <laughs> I do want to try that. But yeah, so we'll see how all of that works. I saw Jalen Rose was on his social media page earlier today. Um, he reposted somebody and he put a little bullseye um, emoji. But the person said Jalen Rose asking whose gun it was wasn't an issue. It's a legit question. So Ja can back up why he didn't get a 50 game suspension. Mm. So it's not all a set up by the system. Got it. It's just, you know, violating that CBA, that collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. All right. So just wanted to make sure you guys had that. And shout out to Jalen Rose, by the way. I think that was the perfect person to sit down and do that interview. Jalen Rose has spoken about things from his past to that he's had to deal with. Right, and, right, right, right. He can relate know. He can relate to him. So. We saw you on BMF, Jalen Rose. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, and congratulations to Romeo Miller. He has a baby. He introduced his daughter, went to Snow Miller, to the world. He posted on social media, my tribe is growing. I introduce to you my fearless, intuitive, and ingenious daughter, Winter Snow Miller. My heart is so full knowing that my girls will have each other as they grow. I'm a papa of two. Mm. I've accomplished a lot of things in my life, but becoming a father is by far the best and most fulfilling. And he said, hashtag girl dad. I was going to say, he's a girl dad. Yes. And that is your YT. We got a lot more coming up as we go throughout the show on Way Up with Angela Yee. But when we come back, it's about last night. Angela, why are you looking at me like that? Because, Jasmine, this has to do with you. Last night, you got a little saucy, and we found out some things. <laughs> oh my gosh. That you did last week that I had no idea happened, and apparently you don't recall either. I, I do I do not recall, Angela. And how many of y'all have had that situation where you went out, got a little saucy, and then the next day people are telling you what you did? We'll talk about it on About Last Night. Oh. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yeah. Last night. So, about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here with me. Good morning. Who's also my friend in real life. And now we're doing About Last Night. We're together a lot. We are. And so About Last Night is kind of what happened last night. So last night we were at um, one of our favorite restaurants in Brooklyn, The Grill. Yeah, I love The Grill. Yeah, shout out to Melissa. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing some things that happened. Our other friend joined us, Tashara. Tashara uh, is a writer for The New York Post. Yes. And she was telling Jasmine that mm -hmm. when I had my Way Up With Angela Yee launch party, okay. Jasmine was a little saucy okay. and apparently got a, a little buck with somebody. <laughs> what not, happened? I don't know. I don't it, I don't remember this, but T Tashara says that I said to someone something like, do you know who I am or something like that? They asked you who are who is this or something like that. Who who are they, someone asked me, who, who are you? And I apparently I didn't like them asking who I was. I don't remember this. Okay, and what did you do? I don't know. I don't remember. What did I do? She Apparently, you said, <laughs> I'm Jasmine Brand, and just plopped down. And then you made a scene about it and went over to other people at the event. We're like, can you believe somebody asked me who I was? I do, I do not believe I did that. That doesn't even sound like me. Well, apparently, it was you that night. And who did so, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. It, I don't, I don't, I remember. So you think everyone's lying? No, everyone isn't lying. I do remember plopping down, but not in anger and just like. And I'm, maybe you said it in jest. <laughs> maybe I was joking. That is, a, I'm not even, I'm that type, I'm well, not that type know, of person, sometimes, Angela. And I want to say this. We've all had situations where we've drank too much and we get a little out of character. And sometimes, and I will say also, the first time you meet somebody and if you're a little tipsy and you're acting out of character, they may get the wrong impression of you. I will say at your party, it was 50 million people around. And Angela has this thing where everyone feels like they are her best friend. <laughs> like they, her friends fight over her and it's so hilarious. So it may have been one of those. I may have been annoyed at that. I don't, I don't think that really happened. You have all kinds <laughs> of hypothetical things. But apparently from third party people who were sober... No, 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 no. Nobody was sober at that party, so I can't trust their job. I'm, right, well, I'm totally embarrassed but, by but this. But Jasmine, FYI. by the way, and that's fine because I've been embarrassed many a night. <laughs> and But I know that this is a common thing, and so we want to open this up to our listeners because I'm sure, and everybody in the room is kind of hanging their head because they know they've had situations too. Uh, have you ever gone out and gotten so saucy that you've done some things that the next day you were so embarrassed and everybody was telling you about them? There's times I met people and I don't even remember the next day. They're like, you were so much fun last night. They'll text you like, girl, you had a, we had a time. And you're like, what? who is this? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, 800-292-5150 is the number. Call us up. We want to hear your stories of the next day, the embarrassment that comes when you find out. Sometimes I'll be like, just don't tell me. I don't even want to hear it. Yeah, don't I don't want to know. All right. It's way up at the Angela Yee, 800-292-5150. with Angela Yee. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. And from about last night, we were talking about Jasmine last night. We were out mm -hmm. and discovered that the night of the Way Up with Angela Yee launch party, you were acting up a little. And you didn't remember. No, I it, it, I do not remember this. I'm not sure it happened because I just do not. It isn't, the thing is, it doesn't sound like me. Some things people say, oh, you did. And I'm like, ah, that's, that's on brand It for wasn't me. you, though. You were tipsy. No, I don't. I'm not. Do you and know? the reason I know it's true is because that same night you went to somebody else and said this, you know, somebody said that you were like, oh, I'm, they asked who you were and you were like, oh, I'm Jasmine Brand. <laughs> but then you went to someone and said, hey, this person asked who I was 
Oh my god! That's why you kept saying. I know it's true, and I know I'm like a fun, happy, drunk person. But I'm, I, I thought I was too. I'm sure there's times that I haven't been. There's times I've sent text messages, and then the next day been like, "What was I talking about? Why did I do that?" And been embarrassed. Yeah. And either you ignore it and move on, or you apologize. I, I, I prefer the ignore it and move on. Sometimes you gotta apologize though. Okay. <laughs> are, are, I, I don't. I, I, I was like Jasmine. Angela, are you telling Did me? Did you to, call me Jasmine? Yeah, I was about to call you Jasmine. Angela, are you saying I need to apologize? I don't know who I said that to. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yes, and so that was the whole point of this. There's been times that I've been like tipsy and done things, but I remembered it the yeah. next day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, and then there's times that I've um, fallen asleep on the floor. Yes, on, on that rug. On my rug downstairs <laughs> and not made it up the stairs. One time you ate. Um, Skittles off the floor when you were. Do you remember that when you were drunk? And I do remember I dropped a Skittle and ate, and that's something I would never do. I'm a germaphobe. This was in your car, though. But we would love to hear what you guys have to say. 800 292 5150. Hello. Hello. Hey, we're talking about some of our embarrassing drunken moments. Mm-hmm. Do you have any you want to share with us? Yes, I do. Okay. So one time I was at a party and I got so drunk that the couple had to drive me home. And the next day, they told me that we had a threesome in my driveway, and my husband and the kids was in the house. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh, you don't you don't, rem- you don't remember any of this? Nothing at all. I'm like, you have to be kidding me! I was so embarrassed. I did not know. Oh my goodness! Did you tell your husband, or is it like a secret? <laughs> it's a secret, but I wanted to tell him. But the girl is like, no, don't tell him. I'm like, yo. Oh my god. How goodness. could I not tell him? <laughs> How long ago did this happen? But then it, this was like this past year. I kind of feel like they took advantage of you because if you. That's what I said. I'm yeah. like, yo, y'all took advantage. I was tore up. I should have just took me in the house. You can't but they do said that. that I, they said I let it on. They said I took my shirt off and was like, let's go get it. Let's get it popping. And I'm oh like, my what? God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry that happened. That's crazy. Yes, the craziest. Sh- Ooh, the craziest thing that ever happened. Yeah, that's wild. All right. Well, she shared Sheesh. that. That kind of felt like I don't know. <laughs> I haven't lived. For, for anybody out here, if somebody is dead drunk and you can tell and they acting out of character, yeah. let them go in the house. Yeah, <laughs> please. Please. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? You want to share with us some of your drunk moments? Um, yes. Okay, so one day, um, we, I was celebrating my birthday, and we were going to Applebee's, and we pre before we showed up, mm. and by the time we showed up to Applebee's, I was already out of it. Uh-oh. So, um, <sighs> once they opened the door for me, as soon as we got there, I fell on my face. Oh, no. no. And okay. even after that, they... Still brought me an Applebee's and I had on a two top and my breast came out at Applebee's. Like, oh, and they had to tell me this because I didn't even know it happened. Not like, at Applebee's, no. Yes, like, and I feel like <laughs> all the waiters were scarred for life. And then I was flirting with the waiter. And then once I got home, I was just telling my whole family about my freaking story. It was just too much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you made me want an oriental chicken salad just now. I like Applebee's yeah, too. Yeah, me too. And the desserts. Okay. You didn't. You didn't feel the breeze. No, because I was like, you know how you black out. I was like blacked out. Black. She didn't even remember. They had to tell her it happened. Sheesh. Okay. Yeah, they had to tell me everything, and I'm like, I, that really happened. Is y'all serious? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And you want to be like, I don't want to hear this, right? <laughs> Man, I wanted to hear it because it, it was like I was doing too much and they didn't do nothing but kept going on with the event. So I'm like, why would y'all allow me <sighs> to go out there like that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for, Thanks sharing. for sharing. I know that's... <laughs> Sheesh. We, I told you, you're not alone, Jasmine. Hello? Yes. Yes. Do you have a story for us? Okay. Um, I was dating someone. He peed me off. And all women know to get back at a guy who makes you mad is to uh, talk to the homie. Oh, so did we know that? I would... <laughs> I, okay. I mean, all, all women know that, you know. So I did. I went a little further than that. The next morning, I came. He was laying next to me the next morning. Ooh. So you were you were drunk and you did that? Yeah. Okay. And would make it so bad. The homie went and told him what happened and. 
long story short, uh, he married his kids a week after he found out. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, he were, so that was already something that was really far along that sneaky link situation. Yeah, really, pretty much. Oh, okay. Right that right definitely right. was a permanent um, <laughs> mistake. Yeah, so one of those things you wait, like, oh, what did I do? All right. Well, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, Jasmine, for that about last night. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone else calling in and sharing their stories. Sheesh. And we have Yeti when we come back. And we'll tell you why people are mad about Drake and 21 Savage. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yee tea. Come and get the tea. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. And Jasmine, who is the owner of the Jasmine brand, is here. Happy Thursday. You don't know who she is? <laughs> okay, Angela. <laughs> and it's time for Yee tea. I know this is, in particular, your wheelhouse. Yes. You have an entertainment site. Mm -hmm. Drake and 21 Savage. People are upset over the high prices of the tickets. Some people are saying the tickets are going for as much as $1,000. Wow. But I think a lot of it is pre, um, well, it's pre-sale tickets if you have Cash App. Oh, okay. Yeah, so some people were very upset about that. High prices also had people telling other people, um, buy her Drake tickets. It's the bare minimum oh. that you have to do. So if you're in a relationship. I mean, it's so expensive, though. That's I, feel expensive. Like, I feel like that's not realistic. Mm -mm, that tour kicks off June 16th in New Orleans. And it's supposed to be a celebration of the last decade of Drake's unprecedented run. It's all a blur. Okay. Man, listen, they said because of high demand, Ticketmaster had to set up a special process so that fans could get access to purchasing tickets once they got through. Then they were hit with ticket prices that retailed for a minimum of $500. That seems really expensive, y'all. That's really expensive. Goodness. Somebody said, he better Chris Brown me. <laughs> and one person I saw said they would work as security to be able to go see it. <laughs> right, right. All right, now Whoopi Goldberg has had to issue an apology for using an offensive word. This was interesting to me because sometimes there's words that we don't know are offensive to people. Right. So here is what she had to say. Can I say the word? Yes? Are you sure? All right, the word is jip. <laughs> And you whispered it. <laughs> I know. It's defined as basically ripping somebody off. Right. I feel like my dad used that word a lot growing up. He said, that's a jip. Like, he would say things like that. Mm. Well, here is uh, Whoopi and her apology. Oh, no. For the people who the still believe that he is got, <laughs> you know, gypped somehow in the election will still believe that he cared enough about his wife. All right, and the definition, and it, by the way, when you look it up in a dictionary, mm -hmm. it says cheat or swindle someone, and it says often offensive. Yeah, I'd see that, often offensive. Mm -hmm. Clear as so day. So here is her apology for using that word. Okay. When you're a certain age, you use words that you know from when you were a kid, or you remember saying, and that's what I did today, and I shouldn't have. I should have thought about it a little longer before I said it, but I didn't. And I should have said cheated, and I used another word, and I'm really, really sorry. Okay. Yeah, so apparently it um, is very offensive to Romani people. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and so I, I'm actually, I see there's been a lot of articles done about this. It says the term carries many negative connotations, and its derivative carries even more. When someone is gypped, they are defrauded, swindled, cheated. And the first known recorded definition of the term dates back to the 1899 Century Dictionary. Okay, I so didn't, it's I, an abbreviation of gypsy. I did not know that was offensive because I have used that word before. Yeah. I feel like I don't know if I've I've heard it and I never thought it was offensive. But if a group of people feel offended, then yep. it, that's offensive. Yeah, yeah, then it's offensive, and I'm sure we can find other words. And I feel like with Whoopi, she didn't know, but she just was like, she took ownership. Yeah, take ownership. Yep. I f remember that happened with Lizzo. Yes, 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 yes. What yes. was the word Lizzo used? Let's not use it. Whatever it is. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. It was an S word. But yeah, that it wasn't. In, in I guess in Europe, mm -hmm. they don't use that word. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, congratulations to Evelyn Lozada from Basketball Wives. She is engaged. Oh, she yeah. met her new fiancé on the Peacock dating show. 
Queen's Court. Okay. And now she's engaged. He actually popped the question on her birthday in December at a small gathering with friends and family in L.A. Okay. And so, according to him, he said, the thing about Evelyn is it's very hard to surprise her. I told her to pack her bags. We're going somewhere. She was blindfolded until she got to the front door. She walked into about 20 close friends and family and the big marry me letters, roses on the ground, things like that. The proposal also had a custom cake with butterflies and one side said happy birthday while the other read she said yes. Do you want someone to propose on your birthday? Uh, Well... Yeah, because then you get to keep the ring even if it doesn't work out because it's a gift. Oh, look at you. All right. For legal issues. Okay. Why? You wouldn't want... No. Mm -mm, Don't do that. Why? No. no, Let me have my birthday. No. No, thank you. That's like an amazing birthday. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. I just want to just enjoy my birthday, please. It's a lot of things about you coming out ever oh, since you had Angela, these let's not do this, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Well, that was your YT. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. Those are the stories that are not necessarily headline stories. They're flying under the radar. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee, and Jasmine Brand is here with me. Good morning, Angela. Good morning. You look cold. You got I a am, scarf on. You know people who are always cold. I am freezing in this studio. Okay, what's the temperature in here? Just to get a temperature check. 74. 70, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're doing Under the Radar. These are stories that are not necessarily headline news. They are flying under the radar. Mm-hmm. For all of you who have partied in Miami and in Miami Beach, they are rolling back. Last call for alcohol from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. Mm. in certain parts of Miami Beach. I've had some of the best times of my life in Miami Beach. Same. And it, right. was, it was after 2 a.m., I'm sure, too. Yes, mostly. <laughs> but I will say that it's not everywhere. So they have certain rules. Um, you know, if you're if, if a bar has less than 100 people, they can still serve uh, up until 5 a.m. certain restaurants. But for the nightclubs, uh, they're planning to not allow alcohol in nightclubs after 2 a.m. Mm, and that's okay. because a lot of a complaints. Imagine if you live there. Yeah, that would be a headache. I would be annoyed. I wouldn't. I couldn't live there. Yeah, you couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't do it. But they did, however, <laughs> and this just was done yesterday. They did, uh, after a judge ruled for a last call in certain parts of South Beach, they did say it's not going to go into effect until after March 27th because it's the peak of spring break tourism. Okay. A lot of businesses make their money during spring break, so they're going to wait for that. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. To makes me. sense. And this is a sad story. Mm-hmm. So a school in Nebraska has agreed to pay one million dollars to the family of an eighth grader. Now, imagine this. An eighth grader goes to the teacher. I'm hungry. And the teacher gives the student a granola bar, mm-hmm. not knowing that that child has an allergy. So unfortunately, uh, that eighth grader did die after eating a granola bar. That's sad. That was given to him by his teacher. There's not a lot of details about what happened. This was last May. Um, in the court documents, because the settlement was reached through a probate court process and not a civil lawsuit, the parents declined to comment. hmm to the Omaha World Herald about the settlement, but his father, Thomas Shaw, said in a Facebook post that Jagger's teacher at Liberty Middle School offered him a granola bar after he asked to go to the office for a snack. The teacher said, you can have one of these. Jagger took it, got halfway through eating it, and felt like he was starting to have an allergic reaction. And so we don't know if the school was aware of the allergy. We don't know what the allergy was, but Jagger went to the school nurse's office. He was given the allergy medication Benadryl. That didn't help. So they gave the uh, uh, Epi shot mm-hmm. with the Epi pen and then was taken by ambulance to a hospital where he unfortunately did pass away. So sad. So sad. Yeah. No amount of money. Not a million dollar settlement will ever, Mm-mm. I think, um, you know, help with that. He was family. only 14. Yeah, so sad. Yeah. And those food allergies are no joke. That's serious. Mm hmm. And uh, so that is your under the radar stories. We talked about Miami Beach and we talked about this uh, allergy. You have a daughter, so I'm sure that's something you have to think about. Sometimes you don't even know you're allergic to something until you have it. Yeah, until it happens to you. Yep. And they uh, have allergy tests you can take and stuff like that, but a lot of times, you know, we don't get those, so. All right. Well, it is a Thursday, so we do have Mastery of Comedy today. And okay. Gerald Kelly will be joining us. Mm-hmm. Super funny. Yeah, super funny. You know, all the, the he has three sons that are doing comedy right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, Hunter. Okay. Josh and Hunter are both doing comedy. Okay. And then Shana, uh, Shauna, who is his daughter, who is in charge of all the business in okay. the family. Yeah. Also, at the top of the hour, we do have the Way Up Mix. So y'all get ready to party, get ready to dance, get ready to toast. It's almost Friday. Yeah, so Friday, you know we it's gotta, Friday Eve. So you know we got to celebrate that. And you guys, remember, you can always call us up. 
800-292-5150 is the number. Anytime you want to leave a message, we'll get your last word on at the end of the show. And y'all mm-hmm. have been leaving some hilarious messages. <laughs> if you want to tell us a secret and we'll leave a message for that. If you want to do a Ask Ye, we'll pull them off the voicemail. We'll get to hear that during that. If you didn't get a chance to shine a light on somebody, we want to make sure that your voices are always heard. It is Way Up with Angela Yee. And when we come back at the top of the hour, again, we have the Way Up mix. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Angela's spilling that yee tea. Yes, it is way up at the Angela Yee Jasmine Brand, who owns the entertainment site. The Jasmine Brand is here. I'm here. And we are doing Yee Tea. Some of these stories are on the Jasmine Brand, too. Mm hmm. All right. Well, Seth Rogen, when he was on Jimmy Kimmel Live earlier this week, talked about an incident at an Oscars after party. He had a lot of fun smoking with this person. I went to the Vanity Fair party. Vanity Fair. Uh, uh, yeah, I smoked some weed with Meg the Stallion and her brother. That was a good time. <laughs> Do you yeah. know them? No, I'd never met. I'd never met them before that night. But who then, approached who? She approached me, and uh-huh. she was adamant that I would get along with her brother. Someone backstage told me that she doesn't have a brother. So oh. now I'm confused about this whole thing. Ooh. Well, and that was her manager, by the way. Right. Who she was with. See, that's Ferris. fun, though. You never know who you might end up smoking with. I will say that's the equalizer for people. Weed. Yeah. <laughs> All different types. It, brings, it don't matter who you are. It brings people together. And by the way, speaking of the Oscars, did you know that Oscar nominees have to pay $63,000 in taxes for their gift bags? I had no idea. Is that crazy? That's wild. But so you I'm get g- all this stuff that's free stuff, mm-hmm. but the IRS actually, you know, takes their taxes from it. So they're saying that these the value of these bags were between $123,000 and $126,000. All different kinds of things uh, from various companies. Candles, plots of land. Plots of land? Yes. Oh, wow. So the IRS is saying this is a taxable income and you would have to pay taxes. You have to pay the California taxes if you're based in California, state and federal taxes, all of that. Interesting. I never knew that. Like, keep your gift bag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Young M.A., our prayers go out to her. I love Young M.A. She's from Brooklyn, like me. Mm-hmm. And she had recently there was a video out where people were saying that she looked like she was not doing well. Right. She was at the barber and people were going in and like, yo, you know, we don't know what's going on with her. She's not looking good. But she did confirm that she's been ill. She said, as many of my supporters know, I've been dealing with various personal health issues the last few years. I recently was hospitalized and was successfully treated for several conditions. I'm doing better now. We'll take some time, but I'm on the road to recovery and look forward to the future. Okay. Now we know and now we can leave her alone, right? Yes. We can leave her alone. (laughs) We actually went to Johannesburg to South Africa. We had an event. Mm Mm-hmm. And so she was part of the event and I was also. She seems like a good time. Yeah, we had fun with her in the club. (laughs) No, but she was. She was great and she's a great performer. Nice. So shout out to her. Okay. And Ryan Reynolds, he is an investor in Mint Mobile, this wireless company, and T-Mobile purchased that company for $1.35 billion. Oh, wow. Yes. Talk about a great investment. Sheesh. So he actually posted about it and... Uh, with the amount that he owns, we don't know what the exact amount is, but mm-hmm. they said it is significant. According to uh, Variety, they reported that his stake could be as much as 25%. Oh, wow. That, that's a hell of a flip. Feels good, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> that's why y'all got to invest. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they pay off. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes they don't. But mm-hmm. it is always a risk yep. to take, right? Mm-hmm. All right. DJ Khaled has teased a golf TV show that he's doing with Diddy and Mark Wahlberg. He posted, let's go golfing. There's a bidding war for the Let's Go Golfing TV show. Every network wants the show. And here is that trailer. Today, we shot the pilot for Khaled, for Khaled's new TV show. I love this. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yo, f***ing you just yeah. like it. All streamers, <laughs> all right. platforms start to There's a bit of war going on. There's a bit of but, war. I was, but, I was the... I'm not going to lie. Puff's in the lead. He's in the lead. <laughs> so it could be on Revolt. Yeah, it could be. I would like to see that show. I mean, anything Khaled does is kind of amusing to me. <laughs> like, I could just see him watch, like, watch him watching TV and I'd probably be laughing. He is enjoying his life as a rich person does. <laughs> yeah, yes. 
And Diddy, as you know, is also trying to put his foot in, his uh, his bid in to get BET. <laughs> okay. To own BET. And he posted, media is the most powerful industry in the world, but it's the industry where we have the least amount of ownership, influence, and control. It's time for BET to be black owned again. So we have the power to tell our own stories, control our own narrative. This is not about me. It's about we. I'm building a team of leaders and the culture to pursue ownership and BET together. We have to unify our power and resources to create real change. Okay. I could see that. Mm-hmm. And he does have revolt already. Yep. So All right. Well, that is your Yeetie. And as y'all know, it is Women's History Month. Okay. And so, you know, every time, every day this month, we've been making sure that we highlight and shout out some amazing women who've mm-hmm. done incredible things. Some of who are well known, some maybe who aren't. But we want to make sure y'all know everything that women are bringing to the table Mm -hmm. and this is just a little small portion of it it's way up with angela yee when we come back we'll be talking about women's history month and of course i got my girl jasmine brand she's a woman (laughs) i'm way up with angela yee when they ask what you bring to the table tell them you brought the table way up with angela yee celebrating the ladies during women's history month yes it is way up with angela yee i'm here jasmine brand is here I am present. Aren't you glad this is not an early morning show? I'm very thankful because I am. Your girl is struggling over here. You hear me? Struggling. <laughs> all we did was go to dinner last night. Okay, Angela. Enough. I'm just letting people know. That's all we did was go to dinner. But when you have to wake up at four in the morning. Yeah, I'm sure that's a different kind of. It's a whole nother beast. System, yeah. All right. Well, let's celebrate Women's History Month. And we'll start off with Michelle Sneed. She's an industry veteran, former president of Tyler Perry Studios. She has announced the launch of a few good women productions. I love the name of that. Mm-hmm. It's a full service content studio combining a traditional film studio with that of a production company. Okay. They also embrace projects driven by complex and dynamic characters who represent diverse people, places, cultures and concepts with the belief it's led by an all women team by the way I love that and a few good women productions is a first of its kind model with the ability to green light and maintain project autonomy through every phase of acquisition development financing production licensing and distribution okay So shout out to Michelle Sneed. Over 17 years of experience in TV and film production. The first woman president of Tyler Perry Studios. She did oversee production for all film, TV, and new media projects. And by the way, while she was in that role, she led the launches of and executive produced several new series. It was over 450 episodes of TV and three feature films. So congratulations to her. All those shows you love, Sisters, The Oval, Ruthless, All the Queen's Men, um, A Medea Homecoming, Ooh, Jazz like Man's one. Blues, A mm. Fall from Grace, all of those things. So shout out to her. And she went to Michigan State University. Yes, she did. Okay. All right. Now another person, and listen, you know this is personal. Mm-hmm. For Women's History Month, Gail King. We want to shout her out on Way Up with Angela Yee. Okay. She began her career as a production assistant in Baltimore. That's where she met Oprah, Mm -hmm. who was an anchor for the station at the time. She then uh, trained as a reporter in Washington, D.C. By the way, she worked as a special correspondent for the Oprah Winfrey show as well. And she co-hosted an NBC daytime talk show um, called Cover to Cover, very briefly, Mm -hmm. with Robin Wagner. Then she got her own syndicated talk show, The Gail King Show. Um, And she also has The Gail King Show on XM Satellite Radio. And then, of course, we also know her on CBS News right now. She was a special correspondent for Good Morning America before joining CBS News. So shout out to Gail King. She came to my Way Up with Angela Yee party, but she always is shouting me out, looking out for me. Anytime something good happens, she'll just drop me a note like, congrats, if she sees me like in the paper or something like that. Right. How did you meet? Actually, I met Gail King a few times. She's friends with Nile Rogers. Okay. And I used to work for him. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, I hosted his book launch when he did that. And then um, I met her for real. It was Magic Johnson's birthday party. Okay. In St. Tropez. So, so rich. And let me and tell famous. you, I'm going to tell you, I was there because my friend was working for a liquor company company that was sponsoring. Okay. So she was able to bring a guest. And you were the guest. And she brought me. Thank you, Jesus. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't he do it? Um, so that's why I was there. Not just because I'm a close friend of Magic Johnson and I'm rich or anything and like that. And you're rich and famous. So that's where you met Gail King. 
So I met her again there. Okay. Yes, but I've met her a few different times. She's always been super cool, really yeah. nice. Everyone loves her. Mm-hmm. And we hung out a lot there. And so we just kind of kept in contact. I can't believe I, you know, sometimes I'm like, I can't believe I know Gil King. And she really came to your your party last week. And or- let me know. She was like, I can come early. I have to get up at 345 Ooh. in the morning, but I'm going to stop by quick. And that, that's why I was there so early. That's commitment, because if I had to be up at 345, I don't know Angela Yee. She did a, a quick stop by, which I appreciate so much. Right. And she also just uh, last month got the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. She got the Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence. Working, getting all those exclusive interviews. She's Everybody's hard, she's hard working. Mm-hmm. And she is making money, and that's well deserved because people need to see that. Yep, they need to see how you work. And she came up through the ranks. People sometimes I think used to feel like, oh, that's Oprah's best friend, but they met through work. Yes, yes, yes. That's a, a very good point. You know, so just always remember that that hard work does pay off. And she's been doing this for such a long time. So congratulations to her. And here she is, um, part of her tribute that they did for her when she was getting this uh, Cronkite Award. When I was in college. I got a part-time job at a TV station my junior year, and I fell in love that day of, of my production assistant job. That first day I went into the newsroom, they had breaking news, and the way that people were running around to get the news on the air, and I saw people that I'd been watching and recognized them, and I thought that was so cool. So from the moment I was in the newsroom, I was fascinated by the business, and I thought, by hook or crook, I want to get here. My why is, after all this time, I still love this friggin' job. I say all the time, I have a front row seat to history. Mm-hmm. She loves her freaking job. She loves it. <laughs> All right. Well, we love her. So shout out to Gil King. Uh, and that is for Women's History Month. Now it is also Thursday. So we do have Mastery of Comedy. Okay. And Gerald Kelly is going to be joining us along with his sons, Joshua and Hunter Kelly, and his daughter, Shayna Jones. She runs the business in the family because they are a... A uh, family of comedians. They're a working family. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee, Mastery Comedy next. Now I'm back, 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 now I'm back, get it. You vibe the Way Up with Angela Yee. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Jasmine Brand is here. Good afternoon, Angela. I've been having this conversation a lot lately mm-hmm. about whether or not people wash their feet. Okay, I wash my feet. In the shower. Yeah. Apparently, a lot of people don't. And there's all these articles on why it's important. Because people think that the soap will, like, go down your body. And rinse. Rinse, and then you just step in the soap in the shower, and then your feet are clean. Well, I feel like you need to get in between your toes is the issue. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. You need to get under your feet, too, is the issue. And you need to scrub. And I actually have... I always have a um, scrub in the shower just for my feet. Like, I always make sure I have some type of scrubbing just to make sure that I can clean the bottom of my feet and do that. But doctors say that a lot of people forget to wash their feet in the shower. What, there's one area that I don't get to my body like that. It's my back. I have a hard time getting like to my oh, back. Oh, they're going to say something else. Angela. I just say, girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> enough. I've, I've taken enough abuse today, okay? I've had enough, Angela. Uh, but yes, your back. Okay, yeah. that's why people have those back scrubbers. Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, actually, Keys, my makeup artist, she has a long sheet. Okay. It's like a long um, sheet that's kind of rough. and That's you, how she gets her that's back? That's how you clean your back. Oh. Yeah, you I need have one to, of those. Like, put it across your back from the top to bottom, and you just kind of, like, scrub it around your back. So you think people are not washing their feet, though? I mean, people definitely are not. Hmm, okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, some people don't shower before they get in bed at night. So imagine you're walking around, mm-hmm. and then you put your feet in the bed. You can't do that either. You got to at least... Wash the bottom of your feet before you get into bed. But yeah. you also have to exfoliate um, the bottom of your feet. You know how people sometimes their feet be like kind of crusty? Yeah, hard. Yeah, so it's kind of... <laughs> what? It's true. I'm just trying to be honest here. You have to make sure that you wash it. And it also will help you uh, prevent things like athlete's foot and all kind of stuff that you could get from not properly... W- washing your feet. Yeah. Washing your feet. So we just want to put it out there. You know, we're always <laughs> trying to make sure we're all doing better. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, and it is a Thursday, so it is Master Your Comedy Day. Okay. And Gerald Kelly is going to be joining us. I wonder if he washes his feet uh, in the shower. I don't know. I would think so. Mm, I don't know. I, don't, I feel like guys might not be this good, that good at washing their feet. Well, he's got two of his sons with him, Joshua Kelly and Hunter Kelly, and he's got his daughter. I know she does, Shayna Jones. Yeah, of course she does. She definitely does. Yeah. All right. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Master Your Comedy is next. Uh, now I'm back, back, back. Now I'm back. Way up with Angela Yee. 
What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. My girl Jasmine Brand is here with me. I'm here. And we have the whole, well, almost the whole clan. There's a couple people missing. Yes. But Gerald Kelly, why don't you introduce everybody? It's your boy Gerald Kelly. It's my beautiful daughter, Shayna Jones. My young son, the young gunner, Little Hunter Kelly. And Joshua Kelly. JK. JK. Isaiah's not here right now. He's in mm -hmm. LA doing some things. But uh, the Kelly's in the building, Father and Son's Comedy Tour, with my incredible daughter who does a lot of stuff for us. So. Listen, and I love it because I've seen, we've been watching you guys do your thing and how involved you are, Jarrah, with the family. I saw, I see a lot of people saying, I love the father that you are with your kids. Um, I, it's, it's, a, it's imperative. You know, I never had a dad around. Mm -hmm. So when I had the opportunity to become a dad, I was like, I'm going to be the best dad possible. Okay. And being a father never mm -hmm. stops. My daughter's grown, grown. Isaiah's grown, grown. And I got to show the love to her the same way I showed the love to the little baby boy. I don't mean to call you a baby, but the little boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I'm about to be nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ten. Oh, ten. Oh, he's yeah, about to be yeah. double digits. He's grown. He's about to be double digits. Yeah. <laughs> So you know, being a being a being a father is very imperative to me. It means it means the world to me. If, if you teach a child a fish, they'll eat forever. Mm -hmm. Isaiah's thirty one years old. He's been doing stand up comedy for twenty one years. He's never had to hear you're fired, you're hired, none of that stuff. He's working all over the world right now. He's one of the hottest young comics in the country, and to you know, to God be the glory. And my daughter's an entrepreneur, and she comes by and she helps me out with so much stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Brandon, we have this thing called Stand Up for the Homeless. You can get into it whenever you're ready. We can mm -hmm. talk about that. But I love being a father, man. I love being a dad. I love being a dad. More than anything else in this world, I love being a father. Now, Joshua, who's your favorite comedian? I'm going to say Chris Tucker. Okay. I have a list as well. Chris Tucker, then Chris Rock, then Kevin Hart. Okay. Okay. One, okay. two, and then three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Dad. I know. Because, like, my dad, I see him every day. Like, it's not yeah. even that funny anymore. <laughs> it's like, once you, crazy. Once you see, little, once you help, <laughs> like, once you help the guy who's your dad in comedy, it's not funny uh, anymore. Uh, <laughs> you help him. I mean, we work I together. We in the same house working together. That's not good for the bread, Josh. I've been here. I've been with him for nine years. He ain't funny anymore to me. Ooh. We like Hunter said, we have the same <laughs> job, yo. He do the same jokes every single comedy show. Oh my gosh. Like. Oh my gosh. Hunter, Hunter, who are your uh, top three comedians? Chris Rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, Kevin Hart. And number three, Tony Rock. That's interesting. I saw Tony Rock with Bill Bellamy, and he said you two guys got into a uh, fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, Y'all got, got a fist fight? Yeah, I, I couldn't breathe. I, I didn't realize how out of shape I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a long time ago, <sighs> man. And all I wanted to do was grab him, hold on. I was whispering in his ear, going, "You got an asthma pump." <laughs> <laughs> So what? Um, ha wait. So what happened? Because I saw Tony Rock said that you're his guy now. Yes, that's my guy. I love him. I love but him what happened that night? Why were you pissed that night? People, it was a, it was a guy. I forget the comedian name. It's a sucker comedian out in L.A. Man, he was playing both sides. Mm -hmm. He was saying stuff to me about T and stuff to T about gotcha. him, about you know what I'm saying. So I was infuriated, and T was too. T was ready. To, he was ready to go. Right. And when I saw him sitting down. I, I walked by and I said something. <laughs> you, know, you know, New Yorkers, we both New Yorkers. Right. So we in LA, we not um, fronting. I was like, yeah, because I'm sick and tired. So Tone jumped, said, said, said to my face. Wow. I was like, said, oh, I'm going to say it to your face. Then I got outside and forgot I haven't had a fight since sixth grade. <laughs> it, right then it hit me. You remember? I didn't even know what hand I swing with. I didn't know if I'm a southpaw. Oh my God. I know I'm right here. I was like. <laughs> I love the honesty here. Oh man, yeah, it was real. But that's my, I love them, man. That night we, we hung out and we. That night? That yeah. night. It was, that was over great. fast. I love that men are like that. Sometimes y'all gotta get into a like fight, that. straighten yeah. it out, and then make up. Tony hit me so hard. <laughs> I told Isaiah when we got home that day in LA. I said, he has some substance on his hands. Ah, <laughs> right. like, my illegal. And yo, I, I got um, Tony's, um, I got his number two. This dude, yeah. <laughs> hey, no. Yo, so one day, this is one day. Hunter no, has no respect. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Let me tell you something. In Hunter's phone, me and his mom check the phone a lot. You'll see Tony Rock. Hey, what up? What up, nephew? It's Tone. Ooh. Yeah, what up? What up? The, as soon as the interview aired, I'm watching I'm watching with Bill. I'm mad at Bill. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, why don't you bring this up? Right? I go to this dude's phone that evening. He got Tone in there, back and forth. What up, Tone? What's up, nephew? But he got everybody. Everyone loves this kid. This dude. Got I mean, he is funny. Yeah. And charming. And very, and very polite. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get it. <laughs>
we was at the garden with the Nick game, Nick Celtics. He's a Celtic fan. Sorry to hear that, but um, <laughs> how did you become a Celtics fan? He was born in Mass. Born in Mass. Oh, okay. But I told him you came from New York. I explained to you that when See, you were older. First time I was in New York. <laughs> first time. Wait, wait, wait. Let me talk. Oh, first God. time I was in New York is when I was one years old. He keeps claiming that I was born in New York. I was from New York. I'm not raised in New York. I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was born, curated, okay. made by my mom okay. in Springfield, Massachusetts. Dad, you know when he was conceived. You know, you, you, brother, I put you in your mama. <laughs> you I like to see that. Had me. My mom had me. I was in her stomach, not your fat stomach. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> Let's well, well, let's let's table this for ten. Oh let's, my ta- yeah. let's, so, let's table the rest of the conversation the for ten. There's a belt in the other room. <laughs> no. Now wait, hold on. I is there ever keep anything keep too far? No, because here's the deal. <laughs> As comedians, you can always get away with it and go. I'm just joking. Right? Yeah. <laughs> can you really still get away with? Because I was so we all did watch, and I saw you guys were commenting on Chris Rock's special. Right? You said that people need to, you know, stop being so mean and saying bad things and stuff like that. But so there's no lines. You think as a comedian you can say anything and be like, I was just joking. You have to have you have to have tasteful humor when you talk about people. Like Isaiah got one of the, the funniest jokes. You know, we don't insult any people, any type. Any, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Isaiah got a joke about. Um, a gay dude trying to holler at him mm-hmm. in Atlanta, but the dude was a big gay dude. <laughs> and he was like, um, hey, yo, my man. Isaiah was like, yo, who you talking to? I'm talking to you with the fat butt. <laughs> so Isaiah looked at him. This dude was like 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Isaiah turned around, looked at him, said, I'm going to have to give this dude my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Lasted. Classic. Yes. And, then, and then what you don't, you, you don't want to do as a comedian is read. Real quick, if you had the personality with the joke, I would laugh. It's Isaiah's joke. It's Isaiah's joke. There's still no personality in it. Okay, so you got to answer. Can you do it? Can you can you do it? Can you, can do, you do, do the do joke? It? No, that's not my age kind of gotcha. joke. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, that's not his age kind of thing. That's a point. Your joke. That's my jokes. Yeah, let's hear something. All right. I'm just a kid with questions. Why is the suicide prevention number on the back of the bus? Shouldn't it be on the front of the bus? Oh my God. By the time you see the number. It's too late. <laughs> That's good. I, I, feel like another, one. I feel like I'm not supposed to laugh. supposed to laugh at that. Like, can we laugh at that? <laughs> that was good. Another one? No, that's, yeah, that's fine. Come on, let's, do, let's hear another one. Parents, if you didn't graduate, please stop up with your children with their homework. Oh, we know where that came from, Gerald. <laughs> my father did all my homework for me, G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-
You know, but that's humor, it's, though. It's yeah, the it's uncomfortable I've sometimes. Written, the funniest joke I've ever written was my nine eleven material, mm. and I lost eleven people in that building. Ooh. In terms of jokes, sharing yeah. jokes or mm-hmm. like potential jokes, is it like a? We all sit down and kind of come up with jokes together. How was the creative process? Do you process? practice to stand up in front of each other? Like, does this hit? How should I change this? How does that work? How do we practice our stand up? Live. live. We go live. live on the internet. We got the with we pressure. Like, with pressure. This, this is a game we used to play. I'm not sure if you still do it. We haven't played in a while. Come up with the topic and then just make a joke out yeah, of it. Just go with it. Just, yeah, just go with oh, it. Let's do one right it's now. Like free throw. Like Uh-oh. freestyling. Uh-oh. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me come up with a topic right now. Okay. Quitting your job. A lot of people have been quitting their jobs. Let's make that a topic. Quitting the job. Quitting your job. Mm-hmm. I got one. So, there's a difference between quitting a good job and losing a good job. I'm going to tell y'all why. When you quit... That means you didn't like the job and it was an easy job or it was too difficult. There's a, there's a good reason for you to quit. Now, if you get fired, there's a bad reason. To... <laughs> My mama got fired from her job because she had too many absences. Sorry, right. it happens. The problem is she works from home. <laughs> That's good. Okay. I like that. I like okay. that. I like that. I like that. We watched him work through it. Yeah. Okay. Again, we are in the middle of Mastery of Comedy with Gerald Kelly, two of his sons, Joshua Kelly and Hunter Kelly, and his daughter, Shayna Jones. And I got to ask some more questions. How is your relationship with Kevin Hart? Kevin invited us to come hang out at one of his shows last year. And it was the producers was like, hey, Gerald, um, Kev only wants to talk to you guys for a little bit back, backstage because Kev is busy, yada, yada, yada. We said, all right, cool. We, we, we're not sweating Kev. We love Kev. Kev knows we know us. He's bi- yeah, we know cool. he's busy. He invited us backstage. Yeah. Kev kept us backstage talking. So then Kev looks at me. He goes, you're the LeVar Ball of this. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you the amazing human being that Kevin Hart is, a week later, there was a promo pitch with right with us in the picture with Kev. And Kev stated, Gerald Kelly is a LeVar Ball. This is a family package that's never been done before. And he used, you know what I'm saying? Because it is an amazing story and very unique. It's, yeah. it's, and, it's, and inspirational. It's, you know, and, and now we're taking our, um, so much is given, much is required. We're taking it to the next level. We're putting homeless people in hotels for the last four years, three, four years. How many homeless people have we put in hotels? 997. Nine, that's amazing. Nine, nine, See, that's yeah, how you make sure. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, 997 now. You know, with the platform that you have, that you give back to other people, because you have the, uh, um, you're able to do that. Yeah, we was in, and that's we, what this is all about—to put yourself in position yes. to help other people too. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay, well, we love that. And I do appreciate y'all for coming through oh, here. Love and you. Thank, thank you. you. And these positive stories. And I love to see y'all together. And I can't wait because I know a, a couple shows probably coming soon. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're going to be um in New York. Mm-hmm. Father's Day weekend. We're going to be in um the, at the Comedy Corner in Houston, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, four big shows. And um, somebody might be working on in April with the King, the super co- the superstar King of Comedy in Springfield, Mass. MSG might be. Yeah. Oh, somebody from Massachusetts? No, 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 him from Massachusetts. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so, the one from Massachusetts. And I'm, so, and I'm so proud of her. She's she's being humble. I am. She, she's doing some big things. <laughs> she's doing some big things and. She keeps us in order, and you know you need that. Y'all need that. You need that. You need it. Yes. You need it. And shout out to shout out to their mothers, man. Like I, you know, hey, people always go, you're doing a great job with your sons, man. Without their moms doing what they do, you know, and we we just we show people you don't have to be together in right. order to be successful. Right. You know, what I'm saying raising these incredible human beings thank you dad thank you thank you, thank you thank so, you so much, much for thank y'all you. coming thank through you thank you for having us and we are so looking forward to seeing I know y'all did the show in Ghana yes so we'll see that and then I know you guys got some more things in the works so I'm excited yes. thank you thank yes. you so much congratulations to you, congratulations thank you yes, thank you guys I like this. Like good this. I love yeah. it <laughs> way up with Angela Yee and when we come back we have Ask Yee 800-292-5150 is the number call us up any question you have we are here to help Hey. Now, 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 now. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. We up with Angela Yee is on. It's time for Ask Ye. This is when you guys get to call in and ask questions about anything. It could be about your love life. It could be work. It could be friendships. You know, Jasmine Brand is here with me, and she also has some great insight. Hello, who's this? Oh, it's TK. TK, what's your question? Okay, the question is. 
I want to know from you, is it a, do you think it's a difference between a family love and a relationship love? The reason why I ask is because me and my ex, we got into this little thing because I feel like she gives more of her time to her family. Okay, she's close with her family. Yeah, and I was uh, I was like, you know, and she's Jamaican, mm-hmm. you know, and I understand different cultures. Okay. So um, she was like, um, I would never choose you over my family, and I feel like I'm a loyal person, and I love her with all my heart. And I'm, she always tell me that she can count on me before she count on her family. So it was kind of like wow, and to, for her to say I would never put you before people who I can't depend on, I, I felt hurt by that. So well, I don't why know how would she ever it. have to choose between you and her family? Um, I don't. It, for me, it wasn't choosing. And I, okay. Let's say me and her are talking, mm-hmm. and we are, it, it's a long distance relationship. She in Florida, I'm in Georgia. We talking, we discussing something. Hold on, my auntie, my auntie is calling. Ooh. So four hours, she'll be on the phone with her auntie, and she'll never call me back. Then Whoa. we get on the phone again. That oh, hold on, my, my uncle is calling. My uncle is calling. Um, we, You know, let me let me talk to my uncle. I'll call you back. Are you sure that it's really her relatives or her family when she's, you know, getting off the phone for hours for you? And not calling back? No, um, I'm sure it's, she's on the phone with her family gotcha. because it actually happened when I went back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And some people are really like that yeah. with their families. Like, they talk to them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're so used to that. That's kind of like the crutch. Mm-hmm. But when you are in a relationship, there's priorities. And there's certain times that... You are the priority, and if there's an emergency, then yes, sometimes family will be a priority, but it has to be a balance. It can't be, this always comes before me. Yeah, and that's exactly how I felt. And it was like, for her to say, I would never put these, them, I mean, you before my family, it's like, dang, like, but you can depend on me, you can vent to me, and you can, you can put all your bad energy on me, but you won't call them and put all your bad in sometimes you have to show people what they do by doing it back to them mm. tit for tat like sometimes yeah, and that's why I stepped away yeah I sometimes to away, prove a I point just myself out. do it right back oh hold on that's such and such calling from my you know that's my cousin let me call you back and not sometimes the only way for people to see what it is is do it back to them right I pull a you on you right <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, I, I just took myself out of the situation, even though I feel like she was my soulmate. Aww. I just had to Ooh. know that I'm, you know, I deserve better. Yeah. You know and you do. And you you deserve therapy. to be a priority. That's what a, a, when you're in a relationship, unless something, you know, crazy happens or the person has kids, you are the priority. And that's what it is. And so... I think you're right about that. And maybe things will change. Maybe she'll realize the error of her ways and you guys can work on it. But until then, you got to prioritize you if she's not going to do it. Right. Right. Thank y'all for the advice. Like, I, man, you do not know how much you are my role model, oh. Angela Yee. Like, I really uh-huh. love you from the breakfast club. Like, I, I, love, I, I love you for real, for real. And oh. I, I really take this advice to the heart. Thank you, Jasmine Brand, for the advice. Yeah, I, I want to thank Oh, y'all, for real. Thank you for the advice. All right, thank you. Bye. Well, that was Ask Ye. And again, you can always leave a message and we'll respond to that no matter what. 800-292-5150. Even if we're not on the air, we still get your messages. And we also use them for last words. And that's coming up next on Way Up with Angela Ye. Angela Ye uh, uh, is Way Up. On the Way Up. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Ye. Jasmine Brand is here with me. Yes, I am. You made it through the day, Miss Jasmine Brand. Angela, I made it through the day. It was a tough one today. We made it through the day. Yes. High five. High five. Jasmine will not stop high fiving Mm -mm. me. She high fived me so many times yesterday. Oh my gosh, it was out of control. Wait till your daughter learns how to high five. Oh, it's going to be on and pop. It's over. It's over for (laughs) Rainy. (laughs) But yes, we appreciate everybody for calling in. Um, You all know how hard it is after a night out on the town. (laughs) Yes. You got to go to work in the morning. Angela, you're a trooper, though. You are a professional. You will still be present and alert. I've had to do this for so long. Not and me, you know what? This girl. isn't so bad because I, you know, normally I wake up at 4 a.m., but now I can get up at 7. Right. Yeah, that's you nice. You know, it's a huge difference in my life. Yeah. And you can stay out late. You can. And then even sometimes after you're ready, you're just kind of sitting there like, okay. This morning I was like, oh. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't to know. Do. I'm used to rushing out the door. I'm used to yeah. getting up and then go, press the snooze ten times, being exhausted. I sometimes I have my eyes closed when I walk to the bathroom and brush my teeth because I'm so tired. Angela, do you feel like your quality of life is better now? Yes. Okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> I am enjoying these hours. Thank you guys I know for you. listening. <laughs> Literally. That's part of what way up is. Now I'm way up at this hour. Yeah. So I got it. Yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, earlier we were talking about, have you ever done anything while you were tipsy? Mm-hmm. And the next day people had to remind you of what you did. And a lot of people called in and couldn't get through. And that's what Last Word is for. We let, let you leave a voicemail during the show. Mm-hmm. If you have an Ask ye, if you have a Shine a Light, if you want to comment on a topic, if you have your own about last night that you want to call in and share with us. Because we're all a community up here. Yes. And so we love to hear from you. 800-292-5150. Let's hear what you guys have to say for Last Word on Way Up with Angela Yee. Hey, hey, fam. What's up, Angela? Yee, yee, yee. Just want to say what's up, girls. And shout out to Jasmine Brand. Hey, I just want to say shout out to all the women out there. International Women's Month. Thank y'all for y'all time. You know who it is. Mr. Peace and Blessing. Don't stress nothing. Yee, Hey, what's up? This is Lamar Double R Pakistan out of Louisiana. I want to send a shout out and send some spotlight on my daughter, my wife. She get ready to give birth to my son today. So I want to shine some light on her and uh, I enjoy y'all radio station. Can't say my name, but I was calling on the, on the incident where the drunkest moment of my life. I was so drunk one time. I used to, you know, get drunk and my thing was to, you know, steal for me and, you know, I was so drunk one time. I was. I bought the man to my house and was stealing in my own house. But I was stealing from him. I was stealing from my own self. That happened. It's true. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What's up? This luck from um, Chicago, but I'm living in Minneapolis. And um, it was one night that I got so saucy that I woke up in a stranger's bed, and um, it was just a little while. And after then, I had to pump my brakes on everything I've been going through. Hey, Angela, uh, I had an embarrassing night one night where I was dancing on somebody's table, kitchen table, in my underwear. And my underwear weren't cute. They were big girl underwear, and my friends had to tell me about it the next day. I didn't even remember. Nothing. Angela Yee uh, uh, is way up. On the way up.